Gates open at Arapahoe Park with a look at the three different and distinct breeds of racehorses in Colorado. There's the thoroughbreds you see in the Kentucky Derby, the pure speed and power of quarter horses, and the cruising and majesty of Arabians. One of the few jockeys in the country to ride all three breeds will give some tips about what it takes to win. Plus a look at an all-star Arabian showdown from Father's Day at Arapahoe Park. We're showing you the behind the scenes of horse racing and some of sports most majestic athletes. So get a leg up, come on to the track and be ready for the start because the horses are at the post. Welcome to a behind the scenes look of horse racing. I'm Jonathan Horowitz, the announcer at Arapahoe Park. When it came to that most famous of horses, Mr. Ed, it was said, a horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Ed. But what if the horses at Arapahoe Park could talk about themselves? Well, they wouldn't just say a horse is a horse, of course, of course, because there are three very different breeds of horses that race at Arapahoe Park. There are more than 130 racetracks in North America, but Arapahoe Park is one of only eight that races thoroughbreds, quarter horses, and Arabians. On this episode of Gates Open at Arapahoe Park, we'll introduce you to thoroughbreds, quarter horses, and Arabians, including a closer look with one of the few jockeys to ride all three breeds, Travis Wales. Arapahoe Park stars in each breed are taking their success outside Colorado. For thoroughbreds, there's Get Happy Mister. He's undefeated in all nine of his races at Arapahoe Park, ranging in distances from five-eighths of a mile to one and one-eighth miles. Owned by Annette Bishop, trained by Butch Gleason, and ridden by jockey Mike Ziegler, Happy put an exclamation point on the best season a thoroughbred has had at Arapahoe Park in the $100,000 Arapahoe Park Classic, the richest race Arapahoe Park holds for thoroughbreds. Colorado can rejoice in its hometown hero. Get happy, mister. Never been beaten at Arapahoe Park and no win bigger than this Arapahoe Park Classic. Then he went to the big stage in California and won the $100,000 Grade 3 San Simeon Stakes against the best turf sprinters in the state. On the inside, he has Get Happy Mister. Get Happy Mister down the center. Holy Loot, suddenly the whole picture changes. Get Happy Mister at the rail. Holy Loot, the gray on the outside, gonna hit it together. Get Happy Mister in front. Get Happy Mister has won it. For quarter horses, there's Toshi Yoshi. He's been pure speed sprinting up the Arapaho Park home stretch in victories in the 2014 Cherry Creek Futurity and the 2015 Lucille Road Derby for jockey Ramiro Garcia, trainer Manuela Roscoe, and owner Dana Yoshida Roscoe. Toshi Yoshi starting to kick into gear. El Carboncito running a strong race. Toshi Yoshi showing his class, taking the lead, and going on to win the Cherry Creek Futurity and Lucille Road Derby double. For Arabians, there's Miss Dixie. Epitomizing the breed's propensity for endurance, the gray mare became the first horse in the history of Arapaho Park to win two stakes races in two days, the 2014 Cobra Distaff Sprint sponsored by Soaring Eagle Ranch, and the next day, the Cobra Classic sponsored by Crow Valley Ranch. She's owned by the Quarter Moon Ranch of Lori Powell and husband trainer Scott Powell, and has been ridden by five different jockeys in her four years of racing at Arapaho. The three-time Darley Award winner is a United States Arabian champion, has returned in 2015 with a big win in the Cobra Distaff Sprint to become the first horse in the track's history to capture the same stakes race four times. The first time in the history of Arapahoe Park that a horse has won the same stakes race four years in a row, it's Miss Dixie who goes on to win the fourth Cobra Distaff Sprint for her. Here's a comparison of the characteristics of the thoroughbred, quarter horse, and Arabian breeds that race at Arapaho Park. The Arabian breed is the ancestor of all the other breeds. Arabian horses are relatively smaller than the other breeds. They don't reach as quick a top speed but they are the best cruisers. They can run all day. Arabians are an endurance breed. Arapo Parks Arabians have won Darley Awards as US champions, and some of the top Arabian races that are part of the Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayan Global Arabian Horse Flat Racing Festival. 
quarter horses derive their name because their optimal distance is a quarter of a mile. Instead of endurance, they run the equivalent of drag races. They're not the biggest breed, but they're the most powerful. In the country's richest quarter horse race, the All-American Futurity at Riodoso Downs in New Mexico, $2 million is on the line, over 440 yards. It's all settled in 21 seconds. The origin of the thoroughbred breed was purely for racing purposes, and it's the most well-known racing breed in the United States, with the biggest spotlight coming during the Triple Crown and the Breeders' Cup. Thoroughbreds combine speed and power, and when they put it all on the line, whether for the richest of stakes races or the grittiest of claiming races, they're some of the most beautiful, mesmerizing, and engaging athletes in the world. Gates Open at Arapahoe Park is presented by the His Highness Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayan Global Arabian Horse Flat Racing Festival. On the edge of glory in the Watts, the Stud Farm Cup and Breeze LLZP with Carlo Lopez looking over the shoulder for the competition that hasn't emerged yet. With races in 11 countries, the Watts Stud Farm Cup will be held at Arapahoe Park on May 24th, July 5th, and August 9th. Behind the growth of horse racing in Colorado, the Colorado Horse Racing Association, the Colorado Thoroughbred Breeders Association, the Rocky Mountain Quarter Horse Association, Colorado owners and breeders of racing Arabians, Cantor Colorado, finding new homes for retired racehorses. Joining me is Arapahoe Park jockey, Travis Wales, and if anyone is qualified to talk about the three breeds of horses that race at Arapahoe Park, Thoroughbreds, Quarter Horses, Arabians, it's Travis Wales, because he's one of the only jockeys in the United States that rides all three breeds, and he's one of the best at it too, because in 2014 at Arapahoe Park, he led all jockeys with most wins aboard Thoroughbreds, most wins aboard Arabians, and top five aboard Quarter Horses as well. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, Travis. Thank you for Good joining to be back, us. Good to be back with the 2015 season here in Arapahoe. So hopefully we start out on the right foot and continue on the success we had last year. So. Oh, absolutely. And, and so you're going to give us the tips on these three horses. And let's start out maybe going from shortest to longest with the quarter horses. What is the success for being a jockey aboard quarter horses? Well, uh, for me, it's just the business and the people that I surround myself with. Fortunately, Tommy Swan's one of my major contributors, and uh, it starts with her um, kind of believing me in the beginning anyway. She's probably one that got me started riding them, and I get on her horses and I have confidence riding them. So it starts from her and someone that trusts me, uh, win, lose, or draw, and from that, that just builds my confidence and helps uh, throughout the year. So it's getting good horses, it's having the confidence. Now with the quarter horses, those races will last anywhere from about 15 to, to 25 seconds. So you don't have a lot of time to plan out a strategy. What is the strategy going into the gate for a quarter horse versus when you're riding a thoroughbred or an Arabian? I think uh, having a little familiarity with them and then having the calmness in the gate and maybe a little trust there between them. I mean, the brakes, everything in a quarter horse race, you don't have uh, any room for error there. So you wanna be as calm as you can be and keep the horse focused so when you break you'll have maybe that advantage at the right second to maybe beat the gate a little bit and and get a head start maybe with the quarter horses and and footing too I mean the first couple of jumps are, are important because they need to get the footing first and without that you know you might be two or three half a length back and that could be the difference in, in a win in a quarter horse race that's very interesting to hear because the quarter horse race is being so short you might think oh you know let's get the horse revved up amped up no it's actually a calmness 
before the race. Now, what about for thoroughbreds? Thoroughbreds is what we see with the Triple Crown races, with the big $100,000 races at the end of the season at Arapahoe Park. There's the combination of speed and also endurance. What does it take to be a good thoroughbred jockey? Um, again, you know, it starts with having good business and stuff like that. I have a good agent. We, you know, I'm fortunate to have a few calls in every race, so it kind of starts from there. That makes my job easier. And then I think what's actually helped me throughout my career is probably the experience. I mean, I've been riding for 20 years, and I think uh, by now I should have learned something along the way to put me in position to be successful. So um, that's it. I think I'm, right now I bank a little bit more on my uh, experience, and then. Secondly, uh, definitely an ath your athleticism. I mean, I think maybe when I was younger, I thought athletically I could do all of it, and actually there's like two different things to do. You have to focus, be fit enough to ride, and be athletic enough, yet handle your business at, at the same time. So there's two different things you have to look at. What are some of the athletic traits that you need to be a good jockey? You have to have good legs and good air, especially here in Denver with the, with the air. You use the first couple of rides, you know, you'll get winded, but after you after that, you're fit enough, and after you come out of Denver, you can pretty much ride anywhere with the altitude. So, Now, Thoroughbreds is the most common breed that races at Arapaho Park and also the races in the United States, and you could be riding anywhere from just one up to maybe five, six, or seven Thoroughbreds in one day. What is your preparation to be riding so many horses in one day? Have you ridden them all in morning workouts? Are you getting on some of them for the first time? What's the strategy that goes into riding the best race and then knowing that you're gonna to have to do it again 25 minutes later? Well, fortunately, I, I, every year I can kind of go off with my success from the previous year and I already have horses to come back to that I'm familiar with from years past. So that gives me a little bit of an, an edge too. Plus I have a good agent, Brad Fowler, who I've had the last three years. And since coming here for the last probably 10 years, we kind of have built a, uh, I say, a community of people we, we ride for. So having that, having that comfort to just being able to show up, you know, do my due diligence in the morning at the work, and trying to please those people in the morning and get to know their horses again in case they have some new ones, I think that's uh, that helps tremendously. How do you pick your strategy in terms of horses going to the front or coming from behind? Do you let the race unfold? Do you think about that ahead of time? What's the mental preparation for being a jockey? Just like anything, I do, do your homework. Maybe like an NFL, you you uh, study the offense and you have a, a plan of attack to defend, you know, the Patriots or whoever it is. And that's the same thing I do when I ride. I, we have a form, we have programs, and actually now we have, you know, uh, apps we can look up where you can look at previous horses maybe you're racing against and kind of get an idea maybe what their strengths are or maybe their weaknesses and take advantage of them. So there's a big preparation ahead of time and you brought up football and football you sometimes have to audible a play. Do you ever audible as a jockey? Absolutely, I mean, I always have a plan B. I have an expectation of how I think the race is gonna play out. And I have a plan B where if I know a certain way it's unfolding, then automatically I just have, a, I have an understanding of okay, so this is going to happen, so this is where I'm going to be. So I kind of know ahead of time, it's kind of, I don't know. I think that's where the, I say the experience comes in. I've been here before. This is what happened prior, in previous races. This is where what's going to happen now. And don't panic. You know, there's a lot of room to make up, and I always seem to kind of find my way there. So. So it's like a quarterback. You run through your progressions. Your exactly. first option, second option, exactly. third option. Perfect. Horse racing is, Perfect. is football. Perfect. Live horse racing at Arapaho Park takes place from May 22nd to August 16th on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, starting at 1 p.m. Gates open, the Miles Massey Handicap is underway. Keep up with the latest online at myhighracing.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arapaho Racing, and on Twitter at JJ Horowitz. Miss Dixie and Lil Rich Girl in a photo finish that goes to Miss Dixie holding on by the narrowest of margins. We've talked about riding the quarter horses, the, the real drag race horses getting out of the gates quickly. We've talked about the thoroughbreds where there's some sort of strategy involved. Now you have the Arabians and the Arabians are a very majestic breed. 
they don't run as fast, but they run longer. They're built quite differently. You're one of the few that rides all three breeds, so how do the Arabians come into the mix? It took me probably a little bit to understand them. I think that's the key with the Arabs. You kind of have to understand them, understand what their pace is. It's a certain pace. The good ones go a certain, a faster pace that's above the norm. And then when you ride the normal ones, you, you can't ride them like a stake horse. I mean, so you can't override them per, per se. So basically, um, like I say, I have an agent. We, he kind of puts me on the better one. I can place a horse where I think I need to be and um, maybe take advantage of some other riders that aren't really experienced in knowing exactly how much they can really use in a race. So. When we watch the races on television, we'll see the pace and we'll have the benefit of watching the clock. First quarter mile went in 22 seconds. Oh, they're blazing along. First quarter mile went in 24 seconds. Oh, they're going a little slower. It's going to be a more tactical race. Now, when you're on the track, do you have the sense of how fast your horse is going? Can it even be as precise as you say, you know what, we went 23 to the quarter. How is your judging of pace when you're actually in the race and don't have the benefit of seeing a stopwatch or anything? I think that depends on, on the type of horse that you're riding. So let's say you have a Arab and a thoroughbred. Well, six furlongs and Arab's probably gonna go in 24 and change in 25. So that's an expectation of 49, 50 at the half and then one, a good one's 117, you know, going six but basically about 120 for the average one. So it's a feel, basically for me, it's a feel. It's not like I'm counting time or anything. Um, I just been here for this track, I just kind of know. And, um, and of course, stake horses, it's about you know, keeping an honest time. I mean, you know, if you can stay within 22, 45, 111, 110, and then maybe a stake race, I think it gives your horse an opportunity to have a chance to win. You always want to put your horse, give him the opportunity to win. You don't want to, be maybe overconfident and think you're going to outrun everybody and, and do something that's, I don't know, I don't know. I always try to just use what I need to win. So. It, it sounds like there's such an intuitive nature with the horse and, and also with the timing, it's almost like being a chef and knowing, oh, my steak's done, even though you didn't really time it on, <laughs> on the clock. Um, so to wrap up the three breeds, you've ridden more winners at Arapaho in the past year than any other jockey, 55 total in terms of the three breeds. and, and that was 25 more than, than, than anybody else. Um, so, and been riding for a very long time. Um, do you have a favorite quarter horse you've ridden of all time? Oh, no you didn't, obviously, because I won the Rocky Mountain, I mean, uh, grade three. So yeah, that, that's probably the one that stands out. And probably my first grade three. So I think uh, I'd have to tip my hat for that particular horse. Yeah, definitely. Favorite thoroughbred? Oh, I've had a lot of those. Um, I think the one that we're probably no more noticeable is this guy right here, Wally Van. I mean, uh, every time I've seen him ride him, it's in a stake, and he, he's Colorado bred, and it seems to be like maybe a hometown favorite per se. You know, I mean, I want a Colorado Horse of the Year, and and, and, and the confidence too. <laughs> um, when when you win aboard a horse that you like and is so successful, that must be a, a tremendous rush. Um, I like it because me and Wally, we going back since he was a two-year-old and I won his first race and then I won uh, his, probably his first stake so I think it's uh, the team you know when just two people kind of haven't seen each other get on the same team and it just clicks everything works it's just kind of great you know and uh, I think I enjoy that I mean I enjoy the little moments and with the owners that stuck by me throughout the years you know that's for me I like the moments you know, and you only last like two or three seconds, but in that moment, it's like the world just happened, you know. Euphoria almost. Like exactly. Rush. And Arabians, you have a favorite Arabian you've ridden over the years. Oh, hmm. And now this shows, for someone who's ridden Gosh. so many winners, he has to take some time to think about it. You probably know him. He's one that went to uh, Kentucky after he raced here. And uh, I won the mile and a quarter race with him. TM Fred Texas. Yes, that's TM Fred Texas, definitely. And TM Fred Texas, not only one of the best Arabians in Colorado, he was one of the best Arabians in the world, winning a $250,000 stakes race in, in Dubai. So yeah. a lot of thrills over the years. And be sure to follow Travis Wales mounts because they're generally going to win. Travis, thank you for joining us giving us a little bit of insight into the three breeds of Rappo Park, so unique in terms of thoroughbreds, quarter horses, and Arabians. So when you come out to the track, 
you'll see Travis riding with many different strategies, a lot to keep track of, but nobody does it better than this guy. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you all at Arapahoe Park this summer. The race of the weekend at Arapahoe Park was an all-star Arabian showdown in the Jerry Parton Cobra Sprint sponsored by Quarter Moon Ranch. The field of eight for the six furlong stakes race included rising star Patty's Day against champion mayor Miss Dixie and former horse of the year So Big Is Better. Gates open the Jerry Parton Cobra Sprint sponsored by Quarter Moon Ranch is underway with Abbott from the outside into Jet Sun in the center, breaking on top and vying for the early lead. Patty's Day in the red cap is a length behind in third place, although Kelsey Purcell wasting no time and now shooting Patty's Day through to grab the lead. Miss Dixie's in fourth place on the inside of So Big Is Better, and then Chindaka Express, RB Rich, and Zell's Bells is a long way last. How good is the young Patty's Day? He's taken the lead past the half mile pull, grabbed hold of the bit, and opened up two and a half lengths on Miss Dixie in second. The Jet Sun is in third. Scott Powell train runners are one, two, three. So big is better. The gray and the green silks with the white sleeves in fourth with seven lengths to make up on the inside of Abbott. And then RB Rich, Chindaka Express, and Zell's Bells past the quarter pull in this all-star Arabian showdown and the rising stars in front of the champion mayor. Patty's Day with the lead pursued by Miss Dixie, former horse of the year. So big is better. A long way back in third place and then to Jet Sun inside the final hundred yards. Patty's Day, a star in the making, has grabbed hold of the baton of Arabian Racing, pursued gamely by Miss Dixie, but no match for Patty's Day. The future, Patty's Day and Kelsey Purcell win the Jerry Parton Cobra Sprint over Miss Dixie, RB Rich, so big is better in fourth, one minute 19.02 seconds for six furlongs. The sky is the limit for Patty's Day. He will now represent Colorado and Arapahoe Park in the second leg of the new Arabian Triple Jewel. The Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayan Cup, part of the Sheikh Mansur Global Arabian Horse Flat Racing Festival, will be held at Oak Tree at Pleasanton in Northern California on July 5th. Patty's Day carries the colors of the Quarter Moon Ranch of Scott and Lori Powell, Jim Schleimer, and Nikki Forbes Robinson. The young four-year-old Colt is trained by Scott Powell and ridden by Kelsey Purcell. But Sunday was not just about the future of Arabian racing. The Cobra Sprint's namesake, longtime trainer Jerry Parton, was inducted into the Arabian Jockey Club Racing Hall of Fame and Tent of Honor in a ceremony held during the Cobra Awards dinner at Arapahoe Park on Sunday evening. He was very dedicated to, to the sport, to the Arabian. That's why this is a great honor. Not only was Jerry Parton a successful endurance rider and racing trainer in more than 40 years with the Arabian breed, but he influenced future trainers, like the one for Paddy's Day. Scott Powell uh, was like a son and like a brother to me also. Um, was there all the time with him and passed the torch on to Scott. Same method to training, the same little speeches, the same little, you know, in the windows. One of them is uh, take care of them, they'll take care of you. Uh, Know your, learn from your do's and your don'ts. Also inducted was Suede, an 18-time stakes winner in Canada and the United States from 1988 to 1992, owned by Roger Hoffer. A great horse, just liked to run around. He'd break with everybody, back off and come around, look him over and come around and beat him off. The past and the future of Arabian racing. That's Gates Open at Arapahoe Park. And until your next time out at the races, I'm Jonathan Horowitz. Keep picking winners.